Hi, did you know that building an apps or a products like a weather apps or web3 products cost hundreds or millions, even millions of dollars goes to build that uh, softwares. So they need to pay maybe five or 10 front end engineers, then back end engineers and QA and designers to build everything about it. So it's, it's really expensive to build an apps, but we can solve that problem. We can speed up the process and we can maybe cut the budget in half. So mostly uh, products like WebOps or WebTree is built in six months and one year or more than that because we are using agile methodology, uh, sprint by sprint development. So I'm going to introduce a new features of Webflow. This one can solve that problem to speed up the process, cut the budget in half and make the products live on time. So let's watch together why the link is really interesting product and features of Webflow. Let's see this. It allows you to take the components that you've built in Webflow and bring it to a variety of different development environments. And we're starting with React. So let's open up the Webflow designer. And what you see is this is a weather app that has components such as a sidebar, a top nav, the seven day forecast. Okay, so this one, you can see this one, this app built in Webflow. So we have the components for the sidebar, component for this forecast, for this current. It's all components. It's why React built, right? Why we are using React. We are making a lot of components and combine it together. So the idea here is build the styling, the CSS, the animation in Webflow and continue development on React. Let's see how it do it. And the current weather conditions. We're actually using text overrides here because we want this data to change later. And what you'll notice is that this is an application. It's not like what you typically see in Webflow, which is a marketing website, a blog, or a CMS, or a directory. This looks and feels like an application that a developer would write from scratch. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up a new modal to open up DevLink. And we've actually built an NPM package that allows us to talk to Webflow through the terminal. And we support several different commands. And I'm going to go and copy the first command over here. And I'm going to paste that command over to my terminal. And what this is doing is that it's pulling down all of the components that live in Webflow into my local file system. If I open up my VS Code, what you'll see is there's a new folder now in my Next.js project called DevLink. You'll see all the files here. And these are all the components that you've built in your Webflow project. This is a JavaScript file, and this is a CSS file. And the CSS that appears here is only the CSS that is used in that particular component. Just in the same way that Webflow outputs production-ready HTML and CSS, DevLink compiles production-ready React components, and they're written just in the same way a developer would write them. So now let's take these React components and let's start to wire them up in our React app. And what we have here is a very simple Next.js React app. And I've already added some of the basic scaffolding in here. What we, we can do is we can start wiring up the different slots that we've created. And we're going to add those Webflow components into those slots. Yeah. That's how it's simple. Right. Are you going to explain what you're doing? <laughs> no. And for our main component, what we're going to do is that we're actually going to drop in nested components. And we're actually going to utilize the live data that we're actually using from a remote weather API. And we're going to plug them into the React components as props. So what you see here, day of the week, temp, high, low, those are actually the text overrides that we specified in our Webflow project for that component. So we'll add our final component, which is the current forecast. And that's also using the live data. And if we come over here, we'll see that the hover effects 
the interactions, the drop downs, they're all working now, but in my React app. Well, let me show you something else. Let's say you wanted to play around with the design a little bit. So we've actually built. Okay. So that's how it works. But what if the QA team saw some uh, problem or want to change something on the design or the design team request to change something? So if your designers know Webflow, they can do it, the components. And you, the React team, the engineering team, can focus on functionalities, EBI, programming, and for the styling and animations, your designer's team can do it. Or you can create a, a team of Webflow developers to create all the components. So yeah, and this one is the live updates. Built another feature called the link. And let me copy that command and drop it in our terminal. So now let's start making some changes to our design. Let's maybe select this card and maybe let's give this temperature a little bit more. Okay, this is actually the headache of all the engineers. If the designers continually updating the components and me as a project manager before is, and if I notice that the designers update the new changes on the design and I'll need to recreate a ticket or create a new ticket for that design. Oh, it's a back and forth work and and the engineers can't focus for the functionalities because they are doing also updating, maintaining the CSS and the styling and animation. But here the designers itself can update the design and the components and let's see if this is live. Breathing room. That's it? See? What you're seeing is that as I'm designing, the changes are actually propagating over to my React environment. Change things to the background color, um, maybe a color less unsavory. And let's actually try to give this card a little bit more pop. So let's try to give it an interaction. We're gonna go and Okay, now the designers is adding an animation, an interaction. And not all front-end engineers is really good in animation. So this one, the designers can focus on the design, the styling, the animation. And the engineers, your team of engineers can foster the functionality. And this has solved everything. This has solved the gap for the designers and engineers. And promise, this will speed up the process and cut the budget. So that's how the link works. Let's give it a mouse move animation, select this one we've already built, and maybe change the smoothing effect a little bit. Let's try it out. And what you see with Link is that all those interactions, style changes, hover effects, are being also propagated over live in real time into my local development environment. Okay, so this is on a beta mode and we know that this is a lot. This is a game changer for all the enterprise and all the products uh, need to build. So again, this is Jesse. Thank you so much for watching this. New features of uh, Flow, bye-bye.